This is Simon Ward. We're back in the interview room, and uh, this afternoon we're joined by Helen Jenkins. Hi, Helen. Hi. Uh, How are you doing today? Good, thank you. you enjoying the show? Yeah, it's always. I've come out for the last few years, so it's always good to come out here with a uh, new sponsor this time. But it's, yeah, it's always good. And you wearing the new sponsor's kit already? Yeah. It's very <laughs> smart. That, um, that turquoise is it? Uh, yeah, it's uh, well, Asics kit, and yeah, they've put the SIS brand on. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that. Then, how did that come about? Well, I've been using SIS products since I was young when I first started doing triathlon anyway so it was a great opportunity to sort of formalize it and, and become part of the SAS team. Good and you uh, do, done any sponsorship stuff yet for them? Yeah we did some filming uh, a couple of weeks ago and the like the trailer or the advert just came out online so it's, yeah it's really cool it was a really cold day we did it like at home so close to where I live so it was kind of a natural environment and it came out really good it was just a cold day of filming but I'm really happy and, and they're happy with the results. Seasonal and topical so on the beach we're short <laughs> yeah, we were on the beach and it must have been the windiest day ever, <laughs> the coldest wind ever, but no, it was, it was really good and just to do it locally as well, I think it, it makes it a bit more authentic because, you know, that is where I go training. Good, so that's that's a new beginning, 2013, a new sponsor, have you got any more new sponsors for this coming season? I'm uh, staying with ASIC, um, Jones Lang, LaSalle, um, yeah, obviously SIS as well, so yeah, it's, it's great to stick with some, and, and Giants of course, and yeah, I've been with those sponsors for, you know, a, a number of years and I think it's always good to have that sort of loyalty to, yeah. to, you know, to your sponsors and, and they stick with you through the good times and the bad times then. Well and we had Kat Morrison here earlier and we were talking about her Achilles injury and, and sponsors and relationships and when you build good relationships with people they're, they're more likely to support you through the good times and or the bad times as well as the good times. Uh, yeah I definitely think that's true I mean you've got to give you've got to give back as well you can't just you know take the money take the products and, and go off and do what you want you really have to form relationships and and I think that helps the sport as well you know it's, it's it's all about how the sport progresses and and from the outside looking in to me that's what makes a true professional it's behaving professionally in every sense of the word isn't it not just taking a paycheck every uh, every race yeah and you, you have to and I think you you have to be as professional as possible and you know and try and you know make it you know make it work for the sponsors too it's it's um, you know you, you might not always fit in the training to be doing it you know a certain day here a certain day there with, with sponsors but you know that's what you're paid to do and, and it's part of it and you have to manage it as you know as you become a more successful athlete and a more yeah. professional athlete so you were uh, you talked about good times and not so good times um you, you started off last year fantastically well yeah. and then you had that you know the issue with your knee which seems to have gone on to, t tell us a little bit about that how, how did it affect your 2012 race in london um well my knee injury massively massively affected my my I guess 2012 i mean i had a great start to the year coming in second in Sydney World Champs Series and then winning San Diego and I came home from San Diego and um, actually had a really sort of easy week, didn't do too much training, just to sort of rest and get prepared for the next block of training towards the Olympics and, and just a small thing, I'd just gone swimming one night um, and we think it's came from diving off the blocks and yeah. then something went and the next day, yeah, I, c I couldn't walk <laughs> for like a week. So. Um, it was a, it's been a really sort of long process and, and the injury has taken a long time to get over. I think because I trained through a lot of pain for about two months, it's just really taken a lot of time to settle down. Yeah, so any clearer as to what, what the actual real problem is? Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't really a problem in my knee. There was a lot of other weaknesses and, and just different things. And I think it must have just been a tipping point and I did something that really jarred my knee and made it hurt. But there was there was other issues that were coming from sort of my, my, my back back and my hip and my foot so it was a big complex chain that has taken a long time to unravel. I spent some time in Bisham Abbey in the Olympic Rehab Unit which has been you know really great um, so just to have different a different viewpoint and it, you know I've had so much help like to get me back on the right track it's been great. I remember talking to you maybe a couple of years ago and, and you know, earlier in your career you had a lot of Achilles problems yeah. and uh, you, you, when we talked then you said how you spent a lot of time virtually going back to the start with your running technique and lots of strength and conditioning work and that seemed to have put all those behind. <laughs> do, you, do you think that with every athlete there's a there's a, a maximum limit on the volume or the intensity you get to and if you either hit that ceiling for too long or you go beyond it the yeah. body just can't cope? I th yeah, it's, it's hard to know. I mean, I the strength and conditioning and the rehab and the gym work has, has always been a massive part of my program and that hasn't really dropped off it's just that maybe something just went and and the body just couldn't take it i had a lot of little niggles through um, last year december and january and 
just kept training so maybe yeah. a few things like that but it's you know it's still important and for me yeah it's, at the moment over the last few few months it has been you know go go back and rehab and strength and conditioning it's, it's really tough after having such a big goal a big yeah. focus like the olympics after the games that uh, my goal has been not be injured so it's it's not as motivating as the olympics yeah so. and, and i know when you when you talk to cat she said it's just nice to be able to run oh you yeah no goals about how fast you're going or how many you know how many miles you've covered it's just nice to be out there in the fresh air running yeah and to do a run without pain as well which you know a few months where i did a run I was like, oh my god that didn't hurt that was brilliant so you hadn't done a run for six months without pain so yeah it's a it's small steps and small things so it's like i'm Normally, I'm trying to swim, bike, and run the best I can. And at the moment, it's it's not about doing that. It's about rehabbing the best I can. It's about doing the best stretching before my you know 20 minute run that I can. It's it's all that I've got to apply myself to my rehab and as well as I do to normal training. And that's what's hard to get your head around. I, I can't confirm this. I, I spoke with Alison Rose, who I think you know. Yeah. She works for Jessica Ennis and uh, and Alison and Johnny. She was saying that one of the problems that she sees from triathletes is that because they're able to swim and bike, they maintain a really good level of aerobic fitness. Yeah. So they come back to running far fitter and probably able to run far yeah. harder than they should do for the state of their rehab, and, and that's probably not a good thing. Yeah, that's, that is a big part of it. And I think I always feel lucky as a triathlete because you know, when you're dis injured in one discipline, that oh, well, I can, you know, I can improve yeah. the other two. So, and it's really for me, even over the last few months, has been about patience and not go in training which is harder than go in training yeah, it's like absolutely. well I you know I shouldn't do this today I should let everything recover so yeah it's um, it's a different way to look at it and and it's really frustrating because I just I want to see I want to go out and race and you see athletes write things on Twitter about races and training and Facebook yeah. and you're like oh I can't even you know they've just done a four-hour ride and I'm like I've just done a half an hour ride so it is hard to get my head around but I think I'm thinking about we, I really want to go to Rio Olympics. I really want to go to the Commonwealth Games next year, and I have to keep that in mind rather than, you know, getting a getting a four-hour ride in on the weekend. So it's about the long-term goal and the big picture rather than the, what's happening in the next, yeah. next month. Yeah. Yeah, and it's easy to say it, but it's hard to put it into practice, and it's yeah. been hard over the last few months to. Um, to, to actually do it, but I ha but I have stuck to it, and and I'm really you know I think that'll pay off for me over the next few years. So, uh, do you have any plans for racing this year, or are you just taking it month by month? It is month by month. You know things that things are improving. As I paint a negative picture, there it has been negative, but things are definitely a lot more positive now than they were even like a month ago. So, and yeah, I'm going to miss the start of the season. The World Champ Series starts in April, but I hope to be back by the middle of the season racing. And you know even if that doesn't happen, I'd love to race in London again. At the, at the end of the year for the World Champs final, so yeah. um, we're just going to see how it goes. But you know, I definitely plan to race this year. I've just got to, I've got to be patient. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's all really Glasgow. Yeah. You know, the two main focuses. Yeah. And, uh, better to be ready for those than try to come back too soon and then just just prolong it. Actually. Yeah, prolong the injury or to have it reoccur. Like I mean, I don't think I could take it if the same thing happened before Rio Olympics two yeah. months out. Is that no. the men? Well, I don't, I don't think uh, Mark could take it as the coach either. <laughs> it's a big mental stress on people the coach forget, too. Forget about us coaches that we have to bear that stress because we're so uh, coaches are so emotionally involved with their athletes, particularly you know when you yeah. live together and your partners that it's. Um, I, I do. I I do think from from going through it as a husband and wife, as a coaching relationship as well, it's it's probably harder for Mark as, as yep. the coach. Although I'm the when I did the race and and it's 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 horrible not to get what you want. But I did the race and there's also also sort of a line drawn under it. That's what happens. And I, and at the same time, I, although I didn't get the result I wanted, I can appreciate the amazing crowd support, all the you know the whole. Olympic yeah. experience, whereas Mark as the coach, it, there's never that line drawn under it. You're still involved. It doesn't finish. It's you know we're still dealing with certain issues, so it's the injury issues. So it's um, I'd say it's harder for the coach to deal with the injury probably. Well, I think also because coaches are conscientious, even though you can really pinpoint it to being uh, uh, you know one single, mm. almost like a traumatic incident. Yeah. Coaches always think, yeah, but could I have done this differently? Could I have done that? Differently? Yeah. And um, again, we both go through the same sort of thing like um you know should should we have done this differently should we have done that should and it's very much a we i don't i would never turn around and say to mark like oh you injured me and he'd never turn around and say to me it's like look what you've done is 
it's very much like we did we do this wrong did we do that and there's yeah. always that second guessing and I think that's what's um, I think it's tough yeah well as you say you have to draw a line under it somewhere yeah, hopefully yeah. that's if things are getting better that's a positive yeah, sign it is, yeah. every, every, every day it's little baby steps as you say yeah um, so good luck with thank that. you um, be patient I'm yeah. sure it'll be alright in the long term you've got a level head on those shoulders and yeah. uh, a lot of experience to draw on yeah. so best wishes for 2013 thank you and uh, hopefully we'll see you here next year with even better news yeah that'd be good All right, thank <laughs> you very much Helen